What's up YouTube? I'm Brett from Ranch RS. As always guys, if you enjoy our content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. We're on the road to 1000. We hope you guys will help us get there. Alright, so I know many of y'all have probably finished Season 2 by now in The Mandalorian. Um, so many questions were left unanswered. Um, it was really kind of a shocking ending. Um, but it was just amazing. It was just amazing season. And I mean that fully. Um, like I said, if I could, I almost would give this entire season just a perfect 10 out of 10. That's how much I enjoyed it. There was some small little things that was in between that made me not give it a perfect score. But it's like a 9.75 to me, uh, you know, out of 10. But, um, you know, and it, it's, it's just kind of weird that the season, let me just say this real quick. It, it's kind of weird that the season turned out to be such a success because it was like preceded by um you know pedro pascal maybe wanting out of the mandalorian um you know of course there's cara dune's character that everybody hates because of the actresses um uh, gina carano's uh twitter posts or instagram posts something along those lines you know there was all of this uh, uproar on twitter about cancel this show or get rid of this character that I was actually kind of glad that Disney actually showed a spine for once and actually didn't cave in to all these social justice warriors demands that's my take on it on that but at the end of season two there was um, there was a little bit of confusion and it was confusing to me as well but it's been clarified at least a little bit that um, the book of Boba Fett, when you see Boba Fett going into Jabba's palace and killing Bith Fortuna and taking over uh, his role that basically that Jabba had at one time, um, you know, it's kind of like, you know, uh, the hut underground, basically, the head of it. Um, it mentioned at the end of it the book of Boba Fett and uh, that actually left a lot of fans wondering of whether or not um, Pedro Pascal was going to be sidelined and his Bando character was going to just kind of go off somewhere as a maybe be a side character that maybe appeared sometimes in season 3 and that the main focus of the Mandalorian was going to be on Boba Fett now there might be some people that are would be excited to uh, see that me personally I'm not I feel like at this point I've seen so many reboots and I've got my nostalgia craze out of the way um, the sequel trilogy in uh, movies in Star Wars ruined me on nostalgia um, I don't always agree with Kylo Ren we in, uh, in a lot of ways but when he says let the past die I can and kill it if you must. I almost kind of feel that way to a certain extent. He maybe took it a little bit to the extreme, the literal sense of killing off all of our favorite characters from the original trilogy. But that doesn't mean that he didn't make a good point of let's not let nostalgia rule the future of Star Wars. Let's see if we can move this thing forward in a productive manner. Kathleen Kennedy has been piss poor at this, but John Favreau uh, and Dave Filoni have been at the center of creating new storylines, new creative ideas for Star Wars, and um, you know I'm excited for maybe some of these upcoming shows. Do I think maybe they're they they're doing too many shows at one time? Of course. I'm excited about the Ahsoka one, but I'm kind of iffy on some of these others. I'm like, these are kind of just shows that maybe shouldn't even be created in the first place, much less uh, be something that's like fodder that is within the Mandalorian that they're kind of doing all this little product placement throughout each episode of the Mandalorian of, you know, these spinoffs, these upcoming spinoffs, kind of giving you hints about that kind of maybe setting them up a little bit too much. I don't like that. 
I wish the Mandalorian um, stood on its own. Kind of felt like season one of it uh, was kind of like the uh, sequel trilogy movies. I felt like it depended way too much on nostalgia. I felt like uh, season two was a lot better on that, but there was a lot of product placement and a lot of hints towards spinoffs setting them up that I wish they would have left out of The Mandalorian altogether. But I'm excited about the news that um, Boba Fett series will at least be separate from The Mandalorian Season 3. They're both coming out around the same time of next year. I think it's in December 2021. They're both coming out in a similar timeline, but they're going to be completely different shows. And I'm excited about that. Because... I kind of like um, where the Mandalorian is going. I want to see Pedro Pascal's character uh, grow and continue. I want to see his storyline. Uh, you know, you know. I think we kind of got a hint of where it's going to go. He's going to help Bo-Katan somehow um, take back, you know, Mandalore, and, and there's going to be all these little things about, you know, the Dark Saber and, of course, Moff Gideon and Thrawn and all these other things. But Thrawn might be something that they say for um, the Ahsoka series. So I don't know if he's actually going to make an appearance in The Mandalorian. Or if that was just a teaser that he was going to be appearing in Ahsoka. But overall, that is... I'm glad that they finally clarified about, the, uh, about whether or not uh, Boba Fett was going to take over for Season 3. Um, there's been a lot of hints... Uh, that it just looked like his days were numbered, but it doesn't look that way. I'm glad the Book of Boba Fett is um, separate from it. Um, let me know what y'all think, guys. Um, I know there's a lot of Boba Fett fans out there, and I thought Boba Fett was a really nice addition to The Mandalorian Season 2. But I feel like this season would have been great even without him. Um, there was some parts of, of this season finale that I felt like they were kind of undermining um, Boba Fett to a certain extent. Kind of like what they did with a lot of the original characters in the sequel trilogy. And one of that, I think her name, that Mandalorian, I think her name was Reeves, if I'm not mistaken. When, they go, when Mando and Boba Fett go into that cantina... And there's Bo-Katan. I think her name is Reeves, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, uh, he gets in a fight with that Reeves. And he uh, uh, kind of... Yeah, she's kind of his equal. And I was like... When I saw that, I was like, Oh, no, not this again. Not this. Don't, don't lessen our original characters like that. For someone that we don't even know. You know, you know, there's a lot of people that would be like, oh, well, don't listen it because, hey, this is just some more SJWBS about how men gets taken down with a woman. And that's probably, you know what, wouldn't put it past Disney to do that. But I feel like to me that it's a little bit of more of Disney um, wanting to promote the newer characters over the older ones. Um, and I'm not necessarily for that. Um, when I say let the past die, I mean, let's just stop, you know, we got an 18 year time gap that it seems like all the shows just take part in. There's, they, they, why don't they do something about the old Republic, which they're making movies, um, or supposedly going to make movies about, and you know, do something outside, do something fresh, do something different, a different timeline that we've never explored before. Don't just keep rehashing the same stuff. That's what I'm saying about that. Let the let don't kill literally like they did in the sequel trilogy. Kill the original characters, but just move away from them and not depend so much upon them. Um, that's the way I personally look at it. I would be more excited about that than I would, um, you know, you know, seeing the Luke Skywalker thing. I guess it it was cool getting to see him show up but I still got a hangover from um, seeing him in the sequel trilogy and knowing what he becomes 
seeing him with Grogu, I just, I, I kind of cringed a little bit. I'm like, ooh, you don't really know what you're doing by letting this guy take uh, Grogu. Like, like that's kind of the way I looked at that moment. Like, it wasn't a happy moment for me. It, it was a moment of like, oh man, I don't think you really know what you're doing because we know what uh, Luke Skywalker turns into. So, that's just my take on it. I just wanted to help y'all clarify that, you know, hey, the book, of, I know, because I know a lot of fans were wondering about this, but apparently now we've got our answer. The book of Boba Fett is separate from Mandalorian Season 3. Uh, we're going to get to see maybe his rise uh you know you know in you know in the basically in the 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 hut market basically uh or a crime syndicate so we're gonna get to see that but we're also gonna get mando doing his thing as well so i'm excited about that that's good news for me but i know a lot of fans out there are probably going to be disappointed uh that boba fett's not taking over for uh pedro pascal and uh you know Mando and uh, I can understand why but I just feel like the Mandalorian's got a great thing going they don't need to ruin it by changing course now just keep going with what they're doing it's working it's growing the fan base it's getting uh, older fans excited about uh, Disney Star Wars for once let's keep that going that's that's the way I look at it don't change course now you know when you got something that's working keep going with it um, but anyways, guys, let me know what y'all think. Let me know if y'all are excited about this. Or would you rather have Bo Boba Fett taking over for Mando in Season 3? Uh, just let us know in the comment sections down below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching and take care.